Yeah, you didn't need to, but it's okay. Yeah, I didn't. <coughs> to be sure, to be sure. <coughs> Good afternoon, councillors, members of the public, officers, welcome along. I declare this meeting open, and in so doing, I acknowledge this is Wadani Nungar Budja, and I pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Also, welcome our youth advisory committee along, and also our senior sits. It's a, a nice end of both demographic. We've got the young, and we've got the mature and experienced. So last uh, Sunday we had a fantastic Christmas in the city parade and also the carols and uh, again I want to thank uh, RAC and the Apprenticeship and Traineeship Company for their sponsorship and also the, the great work done by our city staff and the many volunteers who made that possible. There were um, quite a few thousand people there enjoying what our great city has to offer. My uh, fuel cost for the period was $77.23. Declarations of interest, we have um, recorded interest from Councillor Smith and Steck, and in addition, Councillor McCleary declares an impartiality interest with respect to item 14.1, as she is on the committee. Are there any further declarations, councillors? Thank you. Can I also move confirmation of the previous council minutes? Councillor Giles, Councillor McCleary, all in favour? It's carried unanimously, thank you. And we have the youth, sorry, we have the youth advisory committee meeting minutes. Can someone move that we accept those and note them? Councillor Plum, Councillor Turner. She was moving, uh, all in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Are there any petitions, councillors? We have uh, requests to do presentations tonight. Um, we have Mr. Sean van der Wielen, wishes to do a presentation on 10.11. Those who agree, please indicate. We have uh, Mr. Oliver Basson from Planning Solutions wishes to do a presentation on 1043. Those who consent, please indicate. That's agreed to. And we have uh, Mr. Kelvin Carmichael on behalf of the Bummer Geograph Seniors and Community Centre. All those who agree, please indicate. That's approved. So when we get to those items, I'll invite each of you up. Uh, you have five minutes to do your presentation. So councillors dealing with tonight's agenda, coming out for consideration is 1011, 1022, 1031, 1043, 
and item 1042 has been withdrawn by request of the applicant. Are there any other, Councillor Smith? Someone move the balance, please. Councillor Hayward, Councillor Brown, all in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. 10-1-1, Mr Van der Whelen. Welcome along, Sean, and congratulations on your election as the Youth Mayor. Thank you. I hope you're nice and relaxed. There's a clock in front of me, so you're just talking to me, OK? Yep. Just relax, and you've got five minutes. Off you Thank go. Thank you, Mayor. It is my privilege to be addressing the Council on behalf of the Youth Advisory Council. As councillors would be aware, the Youth Advisory Council has been appointed as the steering committee for the Youth Precinct. Accordingly, it is only appropriate that we provide feedback on the final concept design. If I could simplify the YAC's response to the final concept design in three words, it would be this. We love it. We love the art wave that could become a stunning entry statement into the CBD. We love the exercise and play elements that are designed to allow those who require wheelchairs to use the area. We love the variety of elements incorporated into the skating area. We love the possibility of a climbing wall being included in the stop site. I could go on, but I am restricted in time. The YAC is highly energised about the youth precinct and keen to move on to the detailed design stage. Indeed, I can report that many members of the YAC, including some of our more recent additions, are already thinking about the finer details of the precinct. To those that are concerned about particular parts of the youth precinct, I remind you that the final concept design is in effect the second draft. What councillors are voting on tonight is whether the youth precinct moves forward on a design similar, but not entirely the same as that proposed by place. Nothing is set in stone at this stage. The concept design is versatile, inclusive, highly accessible, and allows the youth precinct to be staged in funds if the project cannot be completed at once. The proposed car park retains the same number of bays as the car park currently on site. There remains a capacity for a youth services centre to be built on the site and for current uses of the area, such as the canoe hire business, to be retained. The Act does concede that the design for the youth precinct is on an area larger than that designated by the previous council. However, the larger area allows the precinct to be less crammed in its design and provides additional opportunities for landscaping and vegetation to offset parts of the site prone to heat retention. It also allows some of the more noisy elements of the precinct to be moved away from residential areas. Finally, it should be noted that the concept design was designed using input not just from young people but from the wider community. The equal second highest number of responses for the concept design came from those aged between 50 and 54 years old. Having been to many of the community consultations myself, I can tell you that a large variety of people have been consulted. This includes a large number of students, primary and secondary, public and private, in our local schools. Local Indigenous elders and the co-design access panel have also been consulted on the youth precinct. It is the YAC's desire that the youth precinct becomes a place that is not just for young people, but becomes a place that both the wider community and visitors to Bunbury can enjoy right at the gateway to our city. I am confident that if councillors agree to the concept design tonight, this will be the case. Thank you, council. Thank you. <clears throat> so I'm prepared to move the committee recommendation. Councillor Hayward, Councillor Cleary, do you wish to speak? Councillor Hayward. Uh, just briefly, Mr Mayor, um, I think the, uh, this previous council and a lot of councillors around the table have done a lot of work on this over some period of time. It is tremendously exciting to see that this uh, project has moved forward so quickly and so rapidly, and I think that it is the right response for us to keep it moving, but it might be delivered uh, sooner than later, so I urge you to support it. Thank you. Councillor Cleary. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I want to congratulate the, uh, the YAC because they've been absolutely wonderful with this particular project, and I feel that it's actually empowered our youth to be able to get out there and speak about 
go through the process of um, public consultation, and I'm very excited that it's come this far along. So, well done. So, speaker against. Councillor Smith. Mr Mayor, it's a bit of sadness that I speak against this, and it's not about the youth precinct. I think it's wonderful. I think the design is wonderful. It looks exciting. My only objection is the site. I think that's the wrong site for it, and we were told that it was only going to take up a portion of Luciana Park, but when we saw the concept plan, it's taken up all of it. So I've got no objection to youth precinct. I think it's terrific. We've got to put it somewhere, just not on that site, and that's my only objection. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith, and uh, Councillor's previously resolved to put it on that site. Uh, is there a speaker for? Further speaker for? Councillor Hayward? I'll put it all in favour, please indicate. Those against? That's carried. Two against, Councillor Smith and Steck, the rest were for. So, do you guys want to stick around or do you want to take off? I'm not encouraging you to take off, but if you're going to move, <laughs> there's a lot of you, and if you're going to move, you can move now before I get on to the next item. Do you want to stick around? No, no, oh. yep, no. <laughs> <laughs> the ones with the skateboards are all leaving. Councillors, we'll move on to 1022. Can I have someone move the executive recommendation? Mr Mayor, I would like to move the alternative recommendation, if I may. Is there a mover of the executive recommendation? No? Okay. You'll move it, Councillor McGuell. Is there a seconder to the executive recommendation? I'll second it. Councillor McGuell. Speaker against. Councillor Giles. Yes, Mr Mayor, thank you. Um, I've given this considerable thought and, <coughs> and listened to various opinions and um, I've come to the conclusion that this is a, a committee that needs to come back under the auspices of the Council and, um, and um, I think uh, some of the points that have been made are perhaps not, not quite as accurate as we, as we might like. Uh, for example, it says that um, the, some of the decisions could be uh, there might be a three to five week lag time. Well, I don't think that's true. We've often had uh, motions put on our papers at the very last minute, the day before or even the day of the meeting. So I don't see that it would be possible to have a five week lag between the committee making a decision and it coming to council. I think the, the amount of money that we're talking about that this committee or that this working party uh, has control of, we heard that it was something in the region of half a million dollars all up, and that I think that's a, a considerable amount of our budget considerable amount of ratepayers' money, and I do think that we need to have some more um, oversight of that. I do find it disconcerting to find that um, uh, councillors find out about things happening by the press rather than from the council itself or from the officers, and I think that's why we need these things to come to council, so that we have more information and that when we are asked about these things in the street or wherever, that we have some information to give the ratepayers and we have some knowledge about the... the decision and what, what the thought was behind it. So that's why I think that this motion should be voted down and that we should be looking at the alternate recommendation. Thank you. Okay, just to assist clarification, councillors, I'll um, deal with this executive recommendation and I'll come back to point, if it gets up, I'll come back to point one to look at membership. Is there a speaker for the executive recommendation? Councillor, yep. Um, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, Um, I understand councillors would like to be more involved in decision making, however I feel that it would be detrimental in this case. Uh, I think the AG should remain as a working group. The bulk of money BAG is responsible for is tied up in the grant funding program. The events that apply for funding are assessed by a panel against strict criteria, similar to a tenure evaluation with no subjective evaluation. So therefore the remaining budget of $100,000 allocated to sports events by our broker um, is for events which are a huge economic and social benefit to the community. The ability to secure these can be time sensitive and waiting possibly up to two weeks for council to convene would be detrimental for the community if we were to miss out on events. I don't believe council needs to be part of these decisions, especially when there are already two, possibly three councillors already represented on BAG. 
I think BAG, City staff and C the CEO have made sound decisions today and should be allowed to continue as a working group. Um, and missing out on events because of timeliness would not show the community that we are trying to be flexible, forward thinking and creative. Thank you. Further speaker against? <coughs> Councillor Steck. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, as the chair of that committee, I can tell you that um, we have been considering taking this back onto the council auspice for some time. I also am of the view that there is absolutely no proof to say that any event will be held up uh, because of time frames and time um, lagging. In fact, this committee has had to uh, postpone meetings through lack of a quorum because of the sheer size of it, sir. Um, so I would say to councillors, vote this down, please. Speaker four. Councillor McGuill. Thanks, Mr Mayor, and I'm glad you clarified that point one with the members, and I would, when we deal with that, I'm quite happy to see this go back to three members rather than the two on there. Um, just following on that, obviously this at the moment is a working group. Um, I understand there has been some concerns previously, uh, but I don't know if making this a, a uh, committee of council is going to change some of those concerns that were raised. I think that the big issue here was lag time, and I agree that it will be a, uh, become a problem. Um, I can only imagine something going on where there's a bucket of fun there. Um, this becomes a committee of council which comes back to this council for a decision and we have 12 councillors all disagreeing and it has to go back and around and around in circles. And as we said, that money then may get tied up or the, um, <clears throat> the potential group that are looking to come here won't come. So I remember our group, right. what I was with with Councillor Haywood at, uh, some years ago with the... Um, with his action group that at that time was a working group as well and we had a bucket of money to spend and obviously there was decisions to make there with that group as well. There were some people around the table. I could imagine if every single time that decision had to come back to the council, nothing would have get done. So at this point, this is why we nominate people to go on this, uh, this committee and obviously um, they'll make the decisions and through the CEO can, can, and can make that happen. So I think it has worked well in the past uh, to, despite some concerns and I think it should continue to work how it has been. Thank you. I'll put it all those in favour, please indicate. Those against? That's lost. We move to the alternate. Councillor Giles, yes, do you want to move you, that? Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll move that. Is there a seconder? I'll second that, Councillor Steck. Councillor Giles. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, just um, at a point, I'm not quite sure at what point we, would, we might move the amendment to have three councillors on that. Well, let's uh, see how we go with number one, first of all. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> uh, well, what... What I said earlier still stands. I think um, we, we need to be uh, accountable for this money and we need to know what's going on with our city. I think um, the, um, the lag time is not really, really an issue. Um, so I think, um, as we've discussed earlier with the previous uh, recommendation, I think you should vote for this alternative one and bring it back to, as a committee of council. Thank you. Council Stick. Yes, sir. I'd like to make an amendment that we appoint three councillors to this committee, sir. Dealing, we'll deal with one number one first, and then we'll get on with your appointments. So, do you have anything further to say? No. Well, sir, considering that you're taking them separately, I'm, I'm happy to leave the two councillors there for the moment. Um, I just want to reiterate what I said before, um, and quite clearly, I, I am more excited about having it as a, a committee of council because it will assist in council making decisions. <coughs> such as infrastructure for when big events come here because we can get a big event here and we found in the past that some of our infrastructure is not good enough for them. So it's a benefit for us. Thank you, sir. Speaker against. I'll oh, put it all those in favour, please indicate. Those against. Two, Councillor Yip and myself against. The rest were four. That's carried. Uh, let's move to appointing councillors. There was a motion, an amendment to, to increase that to three. Is that still the desire, Councillor Giles? You'll move that way? And you'll second that, Councillor Stick? Any need for further debate on that? Uh, I'll, sorry. I'll put that, that amendment, that we move to three councillors going on to that committee. All in favour? Those against? <coughs> One against. Councillor McCreary is against. The rest were four. Councillors, nominations. Who wants to go on? Happy to nominate. A lot. <laughs> okay, councillors. Uh, we've got councillors Hayward, Steck, Yep, Steele, 
Cause a sec, please tick three with your little. Sheet of paper. Still on the back of that. Councillor Cosisek, Councillor Yip and Councillor Steele. So we'll move that way, please. Councillor Giles, seconded by Councillor Brown, all in favour? That's carried. Uh, and I'll take three, four, and five together. Do you want to move that, Councillor Giles? Seconder is Councillor McCleary. All good? All in favour? Steel. Councillor Steel. Steel. So all those in favour of um, that last three, four and five, all those in favour, please indicate. Anyone against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Councillor Steel votes against. That's carried.
Okay, we move on. Thank you. Two, three, ten, three, one. Because I want to move the executive recommendation. You have a question. I'll just, just get it. I'll just get it off the. Okay, can someone move the executive recommendation? Someone like Councillor McGwell or Councillor Brown or Councillor Br McGwell, Councillor Brown, Councillor causes that question. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm just um, curious. There's, a, there's an amount in the funds um, capital revenue decreasing proceeds from new debentures, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is this an amount that is tied to the loan for the uh, Sterling Street Arts redevelopment, which originally was five hundred thousand dollars? It is. And I was under the impression um, that that was a decision that was going to be an agenda, a separate agenda item, so that councillors had a decision about that. It's in the agenda item we're dealing with right now. Okay, so um, sort of snuck in a little bit. No, um, it's not snuck in. Be careful with your language, councillor. <laughs> sorry, my apologies. I, I, I had to read it three times because I, I misunderstood what it meant. So my question is, um, when we talked about unallocated closing surplus funds, um, for the 30th of June 2020, um, the, the recommendations were a list of six things, some of which have already been approved. Um, and um, I was just wondering, yet yeah, was everybody aware that this had been put in as, as an agenda item? Okay, I can't answer that, but it's up to each person to read and be thoroughly across the reports. I would like a further clarification as well then, because it was actually in the item deferred when we went to the city centre thing. It was actually let listed in that um, item as what we were going to spend the $900,000 on, and it was um, putting $250,000 towards the actual Sterling Street Art Centre um, thing. So please, can we have more clarification? I don't think that's correct. I'll ask the CEO to clarify. I think the city centre was quite different. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So there was an agenda item for the end of year surplus position, and in that uh, agenda item, we referenced those three areas for uh, potential use of part of the uh, part of the surplus. And I think the perhaps the August financial review. I'm looking at Mr. Ransom to help me out. I think it was so. It's been it's been referenced in two previous agenda items, not for a decision of council, but for information. Was so actually point two case. or three of actually the agenda item. So I would actually, before we do vote, I would you would need to actually honestly that was it was in the agenda for the, city, for the city centre. No, I don't believe it, it was. Uh, there three items in the three items for the expenditure <coughs> of the five hundred thousand dollars that council had allocated in the budget in the CBD action plan, and that was for lighting for greening and for Blair Street um, and Princep Street design works. Thank you, Mr. CEO. So, Councillor McGwell has moved. You I'd actually like to suspend council until that actually item is brought up for us then, and so we can uh, so we can actually have a look at that, what was what that um, was, because... The CEO has just told you what it is, Councillor Steele. I'm making actually a, um, a procedural motion. What's your procedural motion? That the, the meeting proceed to the next item of business. Is there a seconder? Do you know the implication of this, Councillor Steele and Councillor Kozacek? You but do? I, okay, I'll put it mayor, to the vote. It's not hard to actually get that item up. And I, I know that that was actually on one, on one of the, on the, on the points. The CEO has what? responded. Anyway, I'll put that to the vote. All in favour? Those against? That's lost. That was uh, seven six. Councillor McGwell, speak up to the budget item, the budget review. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, look, obviously, this uh, item that we're dealing with now is the budget review, which the staff have obviously been working with. And as we all know, there are many changes throughout through the budget review period along the way. Um, the opportunity or the, or the discussion around uh, this particular amount um, is in there as a re reducing of loan borrowings. Um, of course, I think, uh, as I've mentioned a few times prior, uh, right now is not is obviously not the not the worst time to be borrowing, but uh, obviously using it for dedicated purposes. Um, the staff have indicated what they propose to do with the previous closing surplus. Uh, if we don't do anything with it, 
all it will mean is there'll be a closing surplus at the end of this year, um, and I'm not the, I'm not one to be wanting to say to our ratepayers at the end of the year we've got this massive closing surplus which we're not using because um, it doesn't look good on our books. So, look, I'm fully supportive of this of the um, executive recommendation in front of us. The finance team have been doing great work. Um, I think we approve this, and then any potential changes people want to see down down the end, you, you will note there is still potentially some surplus funds. Uh, sitting there. Um, we can have those discussions at that time, but for now, I think it's quite important we move this uh, the budget um, review on and go from there. Councillor Brown? Yes. Councillor uh, Speaker against. Councillor Giles. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, it certainly was my understanding from the briefings that we've had as new councillors and uh, around the table uh, and my understanding of what happened at the meeting, the informal meeting that I couldn't attend, that we were going to have more input into what was going to happen with the surplus of this budget. And to have this just presented to us you know, in this way without any discussion, I think is goes against the, the um, spirit of what we have been speaking about in those briefings. So I would urge the councillors to think about that. And um, uh, the way forward for us is, is we've asked for more uh, consultation and input into these sorts of decisions, and this is one of them. So I. I I urge you to vote against it. Thank you. I'll speak for the uh, recommendation or for the uh, the motion before us. Look, uh, just taking up that point that Councillor Giles raised, we had a budget, re we had a agenda review meeting last Tuesday, and there was not one, there was one question about the budget review, one. So, councillors, it really, I know for the new elected members, it's it's a challenging task to become familiar with the way the city finances are presented to you. Uh, this budget review is a significant matter for the council to deal with. We, we move on. It's about setting the expenditure and income for the next three to four months of our financial year. It's an important piece of work. If any a member of council is not comfortable with the information presented in any item, whether it's this item or any other item, please take up the offer the CEO and his executive team offered to you, have one-on-one -on -one discussions with them, or come and see myself or Councillor McGuell. We're here to help you understand what these agenda items contain. Speaker against. Councillor Stick. Thank you, sir. I do somewhat resent that last statement you just made. What um, was that, And that is, is that if... Um, well, that we are seemingly not against the material... Uh, not on top of the material, and that's why we'd go and see the CEO to further our knowledge on the material. The fact of the matter is, what I personally am disagreeing with right now is the fact that Council has not itself had the opportunity to discuss what we would do with that surplus. So I am now in a precarious position, knowing full well if I vote against it, what will happen and how silly the whole process looks. So for me, I have to now go down the path of voting for something that I oppose completely because there was being absolutely no consultation really on what collectively councillors wanted to do with this money. The executives presented this and the council should have had their own round robin in their own meetings, which is we have at 4.30, we had the opportunity to discuss it and we didn't. And there were, towards the end of this year, there were several meetings that were cancelled. We could have clearly discussed it then, clearly. So I am quite frustrated at the moment. And as, as I said, I resent the point that some of the councillors you think are not across the material, because I believe they are. That's why they're raising this issue. And I would like you to take it on board as the councillor's leader so to be more um, encumbering. So we want information because we want to make decisions. That's why we were elected to council. Thank you, sir. Further speaker for uh, Councillor Cleary. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I believe we have had the opportunity and I just don't think anyone spoke up. I was comfortable with what the uh, executives had put forward, but I also would have asked if there was anything more to be had. We've had quite a few workshops and we had the briefing last week. Normally, I would be the first to put my hand up. I also go and speak to the executive or I would have written something up. I felt that we had ample opportunity and if we were to have any more opportunity, I would feel that someone was um, putting me down, quite frankly, because I feel that I have um, have been asked to ask the questions myself. Thank you. 
Further speaker against? Councillor McGuell, do you wish to close? Just very quickly, thank you, Mr Mayor. I will, I will just touch on again that obviously we're dealing with this unallocation here. There is still an unallocated amount uh, year end. Um, so for people who potentially have projects on the cards or want to see some things uh, done, we're still going to have the most important time, which is going to be budget time for next year. Obviously that meeting is going to be starting early in the new year. So that's when I'm going to be really encouraging those who want to see any particular projects we're looking at or things that may be done. Um, for those councils who have been around the table before, that's obviously the time that we, we, we had that opportunity to put forward those things we want to see. Um, but in this opportunity, I said it's very important we move this uh, a very important item um, and go from there and, and look, to, look forward to next year to looking at what we can do with uh, potential other surplus funds. Thank you. This requires an absolute majority, which means seven must vote for it, for it to be successful. All in favour, please indicate. Those against? Three against. That's carried. Councillors Steele, Kozasek and I think Giles were against. The rest were for. Thank you, councillors. We move on to 10.41. Um, can I have someone move the executive recommendation, please? Councillor McCleary, is there a seconder? Councillor Hayward, Councillor McCleary? Councillor Hayward? Councillor Smith? Sure, go ahead. So that, that remains? Yes. Okay. All right. If that's the case, sir, um, I wish to uh, flag um, a, a, quick, a number four for this, uh, this uh, recommendation. Yeah. What is it, Councillor Smith? The, that the council borrows money to fully implement the Baltus Hill management plan and on sale of, pay up the, of the, the lots, pay that loan out. Um, so okay. that's, that's my... Okay. Minutes, Look, I'm, I'm unable to accept that. The reason being we're talking about the land exchange and road dedication of portion of Withers Crescent. Uh, you're introducing an entirely different matter, although it's related, it's entirely different to this matter we're dealing with now. CEO has offered to work with you to bring something back in February. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm, I'm also concerned about... Uh, <laughs> Well, I guess I'm debating it, but I'm concerned that any money that comes from the sale of those lots is not specific for Bolters Hill. Is that the case or not? No, the resolution in 2000, 2016 is quite specific, I think, Mr. Mm -hmm. CEO. So, yeah, it's, a, it's quite specific. Did you wish to elaborate? Through Mr. Through Mr Mayor, so the, on page 37 of the agenda, so the Council Resolution 36316, number two, endorses, and so this decision at Council from, the, from 2016 is still valid, the proceeds from the disposal to implement the Baltus Heights Reserve Management Plan actions. So there's a number of actions right. contained within that report, and uh, those funds were always, as well, so quite clearly Council's intent, the proceeds of the sale are spent on implementing that plan. Uh, Councillor Giles, question? Yes, please. Um, if, if these lots are not sold, and there's already been a, a, a long delay with this because when I was last on council, was when we passed that, <coughs> excuse me, um, there's already been a long delay. So what if these, these lots don't get sold? Does that mean there's nothing happens on all the Councillor Giles, we had a, a briefing earlier this afternoon on this particular matter, and uh, the executive has agreed to bring this matter back to council every quarter for an update, particularly on progress with the land sales and any other works they're able to get done uh, to improve Boulders Heights. So that's the, uh, the way forward on that. So we, we take it on value from the State Government after three years. They finally have approved this. Um, let's go and see how we go. So if the lots are sold, what if the amount of money, which is considerable, uh, you're looking at, we're looking at 1.2 million um, for Boulder Heights, if, if the money is, is not that much that we get for those lots, seeing as the property market has dropped considerably since then, does that mean it won't get fully funded? Well, 
Council, uh, uh, Giles, the council can make a decision if we reach that stage. Let's do with what we, we currently know. I mean, you're right, the property market has dropped, but with us present, my goodness me, it's prime real estate. So anyway, I'm not an expert in real estate. Let's go back to the debate. Is there a speaker against this motion, against this recommendation? Councillor Smith. Sadly, Mr Mayor, I do have to speak against it because I just think that it, there it sits, complete with its grass and its ring lock fence, and in winter with the, what the sand comes down the hill and goes all over the street, and it's an eyesore. I believe that we can't wait for the sale of the blocks. We have to do something <coughs> in the meantime to get this going. I just think it cannot remain like that. It's been going on for years. And it just seems that there's always some reason that state government hasn't done it or uh, we haven't got the money or it's too steep and all the rest of it. But really, are we going to bite the bullet and do something about this? I think you're speaking for the motion, actually. No, sir. I'm not. <laughs> well, as um, I say, I'm in a cleft stick here. <laughs> I want something to do something about it. I understand your I position. I can't support this, this motion because it doesn't advance the issue. Right. Thank uh, you. Is there we are dealing with the proposed land exchange councils and the road dedication. Is the speaker four? Another speaker four? Councillor McGraw. Just, just very quickly, that this this particular item isn't isn't dealing with Councillor Smith's problems, and I, and I hear her concerns as well. So I look forward, and hopefully during that uh, meeting, and, and can potentially come back with a February review, might solve some of Councillor Smith's issues. But this is obviously dealing with this uh, land swap, and uh, needs to be done. So that's what we're supporting it. Thank you, speaker against. Councillor McCleary, do you wish to close? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I still see this as progress. We have to start somewhere, and this is where we're going with this. So there, there is progress with doing our swap. Also, I'm looking forward to something on Bolton's Heights happening, but as you say, that's a different issue, and we, it's really great that you brought it up because that's pushing it forward too. So thank you. I'll put it all in favour, please indicate. Those against? One against, that's carried. Council Smith voted against, the rest voted for. 10 4 3, Mr. Basson, welcome. You have five minutes. Good evening, Mayor Brennan, councillors, and members of the public. Thank you for providing me with the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Oliver Basson, a planning consultant at Planning Solutions. Level 1, 251 St George's Terrace in Perth. I'm the applicant speaking in support of the proposed local development plan, agenda item 10.4.3 at tonight's meeting. I would firstly like to thank the City's officers for their assessment of the application and the recommendation for approval in front of you tonight. Planning Solutions acts for Croft Developments, the entity responsible for delivering quality aged care developments on behalf of Signature Care the owners of lots 1, 13, 18, 19, house number 15, Holywell Street in South Bunbury. Since 2006, Signature Care have been delivering and operating a portfolio of aged care facilities all across Australia. The organisation places a strong focus on delivering services and care for regional areas requ requiring aged care services to meet the local needs. Signature Care purchased the Holywell Street in May this year after identifying a shortage of quality aged care accommodation in the locality. The LDP facilitates the development of this site for aged care. It also makes provision for us to give up five metre, a five metre wide portion of land along the five mile brook to build a footpath. In summary, we are supportive of the officer's recommendation and request the council's support tonight. Thank you for your time this evening. I'd be happy to, any, to answer any questions the council has. Thank you. Can I someone move the executive recommendation? Have a seat, Mr. Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Councillor Hayward. Move. Second up, Councillor Turner. Councillor Hayward. Uh, Councillor Turner. Speaker against. I'll put it all in favour. That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. We move on to 11.1. .1. Someone prepared to move uh, Councillor Giles' request for leave. Councillor Brown. Councillor Hayward, all in favour. It's carried unanimously. 11-2, Councillor McGraw's request, someone prepared to move that. Councillor Giles, Councillor Smith, all in favour? That's carried unanimously, thank you.
Council, we move to uh, item 14. <clears throat> Can I have someone move that we consider this as a urgent nature? Councillor Hayward, Councillor Smith. All in favour? That's carried unanimously. Mr Carmichael, welcome to you, sir. So you have five minutes. My name is Kelvin Carmichael. I'm the chairperson of Bunbury Geograph Seniors and Community Centre. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you this evening. The financial situation of Bunbury Geograph Seniors and Community Centre, formerly known as Bunbury Mills on Wheels and Senior Citizen Association, has been ongoing for some years. As the centre has been running at a loss over those years, Staley's debt has grown to an unacceptable level due to pre previous funding if being withdrawn. The new board elected on August has made it a priority to lower this debt and to eventually pay it off completely. To this end, we decided to rebrand, set up a Facebook page and a website so we can be more accessible to the public. This has been achieved. The board also set up a fundraising committee and, en and enlarged the op shop these activities have been very positive in bringing in much needed funds. The board called a special general meeting of the members to enlighten them of our financial situations and ask for donations. We received $6,000 from members. Most of our members do not have the financial capacity to donate money. To acquire the money to pay off this debt was going to take time. This time, ran out Thursday, the 28th of November. On this date, we were informed by the committee home care that the contract to supply meals to them will cease in January. Although also unexpected, on, although unexpected, the board believes this will allow us to go forward as it will reduce our overheads with a reduction of two staff. Later that day, we received a phone call from the manager of Staley's requesting payment of their debt. With the help of the Mayor Gary Brennan, Councillor Treston Smith and Councillor Bed McCleary have brought this situation to the attention of the Council and we ask that you consider paying off this debt so Bunbury Geograph Seniors and Community Centre can continue into 2020 without the stress of a large debt hanging over us. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So I'm prepared to move the executive recommendation. Ca Councillor Smith. Well, can we deal with the executive recommendation first, defeat that, and then we can, you, you're foreshadowing you wish to move the alternate. Okay. Someone prepared to move what's in front of us today? Thank you. Councillor McGrill, is there a seconder? I'll second it, pro forma. Councillor McGrill? Okay. Speakers against Councillor Hayward. Uh, thanks very much, Mr Mayor. Um, we're talking about $33,000, which is a lot of money uh, in some ways, but compared to the annual budget we deal with, it's not a lot of money. Um, I think that I urge you to vote this down and consider the other option. I think the reality is that these people are stuck. They're in a bit of a tough place. I think giving them a, a loan over a short period probably isn't the solution that's really needed. Um, so I urge councillors to vote this down. Let's look at the alternative uh, and let's get them out of trouble. Thank you. Speaker 4. Councillor McGrill. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I understand that 100% that they're obviously going through a bit of a tough time now, as not only they are, but a number of community groups are. And I think, um, although the, you know, the alternate recommendation certainly has some, some positives there, and if, it, if this gets to feed and that gets up, I'm not going to be that upset, but I think we might be stepping on a bit of a dangerous precedent there. Um, what happens when the next community group comes along and says, we've got a bit of a debt here, can you guys just bail us out? Um, they, they've, the community centre have just mentioned to us that they've been working towards, obviously, a profitable situation. Um, and obviously, in the, in the officer's comments in this report, it talks about uh, where they're going to be in a year's time, which is fantastic for them and fantastic for, fantastic for us. 
If we go and just wipe this debt off and pay it off for them, I think it's sort of, as I said, setting a dangerous precedent. It's not like we're asking them to repay this money straight away. Um, they've obviously got until June uh, 30th of June 2021, which is, which is some time away. Uh, obviously, interest-free is not a bad deal. And I'm sure if there's a situation where they need a bit more help, we might, uh, may be able to extend that. But completely writing the debt off, I don't think, is the, is the correct business of, of, uh, of council. And as I said, it, it may set a dangerous precedent. So by all means, let's support them. Um, and I'm sure we can work in an agreement that they can repay that debt, and that'll be great. I'll put it all in favour, please indicate. <clears throat> Those against? That's lost. Councillor McGuill and myself voted against. The rest were for. Councillor McCleary. Paul Smith. Councillor Smith. I'll just ask for a seconder. Did you second that, Councillor McCleary? Thank you. Carry on, Councillor Smith. Thank you very much. Um, Option A. Option A. Option A. Yep. I'm happy for you to continue. It's everyone else interrupting you. Or, or guiding you, possibly. Councillor McCleary. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <clears throat> I'm voting for this motion because the ongoing success of this organisation is vital to our community. It is appropriate for Council to support our seniors and elderly with a service such as the centre provides. It fits with our local roles and responsibilities. We may choose to be as little involved or as heavily involved as we like with community services such as childcare, aged care and accommodation, community care and welfare services. Clearly, this old debt that the centre is totally unable to afford to pay will allow them to move forward positively and productively. They will be able to focus on new strategies and initiatives that will increase membership and their income with the aim of them becoming self-sustaining in the near future. To offer a loan, and I'm sure the members will be grateful for the gesture instead of the one of contribution, does not change the status quo for them. They will still have a debt, just a different supplier, and still not have the financial income to repay it. The solution is for Council to pay the debt. Only then will the centre be able to move onward and upward to the benefit of all. Members of the centre are very proactive in fundraising. Everyone does their bit, but they will never raise enough money to pay this bill. Already they are having success with the Opera Shop and the Tea Cozy Caf clientele is growing rapidly. Young families, locals, tourists and out-of-towners even seniors from visiting towns are hearing about them through Facebook and word of mouth and dropping in for lunch and a bit of shopping. The word is spreading, but right now, today, the centre needs our council's support in servicing the $33,000 debt for them. I urge all councillors to vote in support of this motion. Thank you. Speaker against. I'll put it all in favour. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, officers. Thank you, members of the public. Have a happy and safe Christmas. We'll see you all next year.